Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. At the heart of any disappointment is unmet expectations. The Day Before Monday is an encouraging and practical podcast, giving you the tools to have a happier work experience. Yes, even on Mondays. You no longer need to dread the Day Before Monday because we're going to go deep with candid conversations with experts to help you push your way to happier days at work. And here's your host, Brenda Cunningham of Push Career Management with The Day Before Monday. Welcome back to another episode of The Day Before Monday. I'm Brenda Cunningham with Push Career Management. I am a certified professional resume writer, job search strategist, and a credential career manager. Now, I used to work in corporate America as an engineer (laughs) with two small children that introduced a level of stress into my life that I don't know that I was completely prepared for. Now I help people navigate the world of work. I've been in jobs that I've hated. I've been in jobs that completely crushed my self-esteem. Um, and now I am in uh, an entrepreneurial phase of my career. And I'll tell you, I'm going to start today's show by um, letting you in on a little secret. I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Um, I've been really operating in a space of overwhelm for quite some time. Probably this whole year, I would say, has been in just a constant state of whiplash. Just, I can't catch up. I'm always moving at breakneck speed. Like, where is the pause button? And I can't seem to find the pause button. And I attempt to hit it, and I schedule a day off, and then guess what? something else comes up. My kids get sick. Today, my son's bus was an hour late. It caused everything in my life to be off by a full hour. So now I'm rushing, I'm rushing, I'm rushing. And this has been, this has become my normal um, at least this year. And I'm done. (laughs) I'm done living in the overwhelm. And so one of the things that was super important to me um, as I started to get exposed to this concept of self-care was to bring in the hands-down expert on the subject. Her name is LaVista Jones. I have her here in studio with me. Well, she's a busy wife, mom, and entrepreneur in her own right. But she manages to prioritize self-care routines and helps her clients to do so as well. Now, she not only focuses on self-care, but also on the the kind of the systems, the business systems that really help to keep you organized and keep you kind of proactively out of that overwhelmed state. And so welcome, La Vista, to The Day Before Monday. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Of course. And so I think about people who work 80 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I think about people who have children, schools back in session here, at least in Arizona. Mm -hmm. You know, soon in the next couple of weeks, they'll be back on the East Coast, Mm -hmm. too. I think about my own situation, caregiving for my grandmother. How many people in this world are just dealing with some stuff? and we need a we need a pause button. We need a timeout. How do you you talk about prioritizing self care routines? I, I, I can't wrap my head around that. How does one even manage to do that? So that's such a good question. As far as prioritizing your self care, one of the things that I think that needs to shift with thinking about self care is a lot of the times we look at it as this extra thing that I have on my to do list that I need to check off. Like, okay, I've yes. got to go to work and I've got to cook dinner and I need to take care of my kids and I need to do bath time and I need to do self care. Yes. Where the mindset shift that really needs to happen when we're looking at self care is how do we infuse just everything that we're doing in our day to day? with self-care? How do we identify the little things that actually recharge our soul that we might not even realize that we're doing and celebrating those things? And then how can we incorporate little tiny actions, self-care actions, 
every single day so that it's not this, okay, let me check this thing off that I have done for self-care. I've been taking care of myself all day long. And they're tiny things. Like, you know, one of the things that I uh, shared was when I take a lunch break, Mm -hmm. like there's very often that uh, I will have like lemonade or something like that with my lunch, but I pour it in one of these beautiful wine glasses that I have. So I love peacocks. Okay. (laughs) And uh, one of my girlfriends actually had these beautiful hand-painted peacock wine glasses created for me. Now, because I've been in kind of like baby making mode for like almost five years, like wine has not been part of my <laughs> like life, right? Yes. Because I'm trying to invite Thank like, you these, for new, that. Yes, these new lives into the world. Um, but I still love the glasses, like yeah. the peacocks, the, the fact that my friend took the time and thought about me to have these made. It makes me happy every time I see them. And so it's one of those things where it's just like, I don't want to, you know, save these these glasses for like this special occasion. Uh, every day is day. A, Yeah. Okay. Every day is special. Like me sitting down and having lunch, that's special. And yeah. so I'm going to use that glass and I'm going to pour my tea in there. I'm going to pour my lemonade in there. That's self-care. Wow. What a great kind of definition to kind of get us started, right? Um, I didn't even think about something so simple as, you know, I, I see images of these women at the end of a long work day, they come home, they pour themselves a glass of wine, and it looks lovely, but I'm not a drinker. Mm-hmm. And so how could I enjoy that same kind of feeling mm-hmm. of, of decompressing and I'm just kind of getting into my relaxation mode? Yeah. I could still use the wine glass exactly. and fill it up with something else, whoever said. If it makes you happy, yes. yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. And so I'm curious what happened along the way? (laughs) Because we don't just, what I found is, right, people become advocates for things once they've gone through something, Mm -hmm. right? People are advocates for heart disease once they've had a a loved one die of heart disease. And so something, I'm curious, did something happen along the way that made you wake up and say, hold on, wait a minute, we got to start focusing on self-care. What what happened? Tell us a little bit about your story. Man, yeah, something <laughs> happened. <laughs> something like major happened. So um, I, I definitely experienced a about with burnout. So uh, I always call it like my, my former life, you okay. know, before I, I went back into entrepreneurship. I had a corporate career, and it was one that I loved. So I wasn't one that was like, oh, like I got to go to this job. Like, I loved everything about what I did, you know, from the reporting to, you know, diving into the data, to my team, to my bosses, to the travel. I loved everything about it. Um, and once I started there, I had, you know, this ambition that kind of— um, built up in me. And so it's like there were very specific things that I knew I wanted to achieve in my career. And so it's like, okay, I've gotten to this level. I want to get to the next one. Okay, I've gotten here. I want to get to the next one. So my ambition really drove me to to be successful. And, you know, I think that I was. I achieved AVP even before I turned 30. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I, I loved what I did. But um, I was doing it at a very unsustainable pace but I didn't realize it. And I I can, looking back, I remember a coworker of mine, I think maybe year two into my career saying to me, hey, you know, LV, I'm concerned about your quality of life. And I remember looking at him for, you know, with with my snack or really my lunch for the day in my hand, which was a cup of coffee. Which was a snack. Okay. Yeah, which was a cup of coffee and it was a pack of honey nut peanuts which is what I was going to eat to sustain myself for the day. For the whole day. And I looked at him and I'm like, quality of life. And I'm just like, yeah, like I got money to make and I have positions. I'm living the dream. Right? Like I'm trying to like live my best life here. Don't come at me with quality of life (laughs) crap. Right? Let me do me. And, um, you know, I just kind of kept going. You know, I traveled every single week. But again, it, I loved it. I loved every aspect of it. But it got to be a point um, about year seven. I was just tired yeah. all the time. And I couldn't really put 
my pulse from the trigger, like why I was so tired, because nothing had changed. Right. Like I still had the same rigorous travel schedule that I had had, you know, like almost the entire time I had been there. But it was I was just tired in every opportunity I could take. Like I'm catching a nap, you know, when I'm at the house or at the airport or on the, the airplane. Um, and then it kind of progressed where I would just get like these horrible headaches. And it's just like, okay, like Tylenol was just kind of, it was like popping Tic Tacs. Like it was like, I got to get rid of this headache, but I couldn't. It was just like this nagging headache that just kind of like kept and kept and kept. And then eventually, you know, if I was at my office, luckily the, the office that I worked at had a nursing station, a nurse's station there. And I would be sitting at my desk and I'm like, I don't feel Right. Like, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I, I something's not right. She's and not I would right. walk myself over and they would they would take like my vitals and they'd be like, so your blood pressure is like sky high. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> and they're like, you know, are you under an amount of stress? And I'm like, I mean, no more than usual. Like, I don't know why it would I'm be good. high right now. Right. And so then that progressed and uh, I would find myself at my desk. Uh, I would get feedback or um something that needed to be changed in a report from my boss. And I would start crying. I would like bawling, <laughs> crying. <laughs> yes. At my desk. Just and I'm like case. thinking to myself, like, what is wrong with you? Like <laughs> he has told you things like this in the past and you just. Your roll skin with it, was right? all thick. Yeah. And it's like, why are you crying? It's like, you know, that movie, like there's no crying in baseball. Like there's no crying in corporate. Like, <laughs> now you're why a delicate, yeah. wilting flower. And I'm flower. just sitting here like bawling, crying. Um, and then again, that continued to progress where I was at home and I started negotiating with my husband. Don't make me go to work today. Like, I'll do anything if you don't make me go to work today. And he's looking at me like, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you got to get out of here and go somewhere. <laughs> so get in the car, drive yourself to the office, and get your life together. And figure and go it to out. Work. Um, but I still, I'm like, I don't, I don't understand what's happening. Um, and then eventually, like once I realized, like, oh, like something is like just not right. I found myself having anxiety attacks on the two o two driving into work. So palm sweating. I could feel like my heart beating out of my chest. I'm crying. And it's just like, oh, got it. Like, you know, my body at that point was just like, no, like we're we're not we're doing done. this. I tap out. Yeah. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> you might want I to quit keep you. going <laughs> to this job and you might want to keep this hectic travel schedule and sometimes working 24 hours a day and not eating and not resting and not taking lunches. And you might want to do that, but we're done with this. Um, and so what happened is that I actually ended up having to take six weeks of short-term disability from that job. Um, and, you know, even had to take it a step further. I had to start seeing a psychiatrist or psychologist because it was like, like, I'm not okay. And I need some help to get back to a good space. Um, and eventually when I was able to go back to work, um, literally just kind of like walking in and having um, the the meeting schedule that I had, it was like, I'm just too overwhelmed to even function in this. So it's like, even with the rest that I had, it was, I couldn't. Was it like the damage had already been yeah, done? Yeah. The damage was, it was, yeah. It was, I was too far gone. Um, and so then it was like, okay, maybe I need to pay attention to myself a little bit more, take a little bit better care of myself. So my husband and I, we had this talk and, you know, I had had a consultancy before I, I had taken that corporate job. And he's like, well, maybe it's time for you to start doing your thing again. Um, plus, we were starting to talk about having children. And, you know, even my my boss was like, how are you going to do this job <laughs> With babies, You're and I'm not. like, I don't know. I was like, but I'll figure it out. Like, that's like my next adventure sure. to kind of tackle. Um, and so you would think that I had learned my lesson about taking care of myself, but I still had that mindset that my self-care was this thing I had to check off. Like, okay, I went and I got my massage today. I've had self-care. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, maybe had a date with my girlfriend. I've had self-care. And so um, about two years into relaunching my business, I dealt with burnout all over, all again. over again. And that was also coupled with some postpartum depression from having my first son. Okay. And so it was just like, okay, LaVista, like something's got to give because you've been down this road twice now. And so that's when, you know, I started doing some, um, some mindset work about, you know, what really is 
self-care because, you know, I'm doing it, but it doesn't seem to be helping me. And that's where I was able to eventually land that, you know, it's not the separate standalone thing that I need to be doing. I need to be doing things to infuse my self-care throughout the entire day so that I can, you know, take care of myself so that, um, you know, I can do all the things <clears throat> that I need to do in my day and not be on the brink of burnout again. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to need to take a quick time out here because <laughs> as you were talking, all I saw were flashes of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I saw images and flashes of OMG, right? Yeah. This is crazy. Uh, the parallels are just out of this world. Um, you talked about, you know, loving your job, but it was kind of secretly destroying you from the inside. You oh, didn't even yeah. really know what was happening. Um, and you didn't realize it, right? Um, it, it will kind of creep up on you. You turn around and it's like, oh, shoot, you were right there in yeah. my face. Yeah. I, I wrote down the words like you were so tired, you couldn't even shake it off. I have very recently... <laughs> up to present day, um, been so tired that even with a few days off, I come back and I'm like, that wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. I'm still tired. I'm still overloaded. I'm still stressed out. I'm crying over things that I've never cried about before. Like, why am I crying? (laughs) I am not some sort of wimp. I'm not a wuss. Like, I promise I can handle things. I can handle life. I'm an adult. And there are days I don't feel like adulting. But for the most part, I am an adult and Mm -hmm. I can handle what life throws at me. Um, But I have been feeling defeated. And I know I can't be the only one. And so, right. And so as people are listening to this, right, we're talking about people who might you might think that it's your job you hate, but it's just the 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 wear and tear on your body that mm-hmm. maybe your job has has <laughs> impressed upon you yeah. that really is just kind of making it um, unbearable, right? And it's so so difficult. You talked about therapy, yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's just right. And so a shout out to Kelly Center, right? Yes. Kelly Center, um, Centered Living. Um, and she is a therapist, and she's doing her part to kind of destigmatize going to um, therapy. therapy, right? Yeah. Why do we think that it's somehow uh, it's not Christian? It's not. Uh, it's who said? Yeah, shut that. You know, shut that off. Um, and so embrace therapy. I have embraced therapy. I've taken my son to therapy. I'm considering therapy all over again. um, And there's nothing wrong with it. And Mm -mm. so please, if you're watching live, if you're listening live, if you're watching or listening after the fact, embrace the fact that therapy is a legitimate solution, right? And it can truly, truly help you. But even after six weeks, you came back and the overwhelm just crippled you all over again. Mm-hmm. And so at what point did you decide an, just enough? Like, at all this enough, um, did you immediately just quit your job? Did you <laughs> kind of put together some sort of transition plan? Um, how did that mm. physically transpire? Well, so here's the thing. <laughs> I did kind of just quit my job. You know, we I, I, I knew that I had a... Um, a skill that was marketable that I could use to bring money in through my consultancy. Um, And so it was one of those things like, I don't have to deal with this. I'm not going to keep putting myself through this. And so my husband and I, we had a dinner and we were just kind of talking. He was like, yeah, you need to go. Like, I mean, you, you're you not going to be able to keep like, okay, you're going to work for two weeks and then six weeks off on disability and like work for two weeks and six weeks off yeah. for disability. Like, this is clearly not working for you right. anymore. And so um, we had made the decision that I was going to go ahead and resign. And I went in the next day and put in my notice. Um, and because it was a financial institution, they typically will say, okay, 
okay, deuces. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you for we your don't service. even need you to work Goodbye. like your, you know, your your time out. You will just escort you to the door yeah. today. And that's what they did. And that Friday, my husband and I, we flew to Maui to celebrate our <laughs> anniversary. And <laughs> I came home and it was just like, well, I guess I should probably try and find some clients so that I can <laughs> bring some income in. So, you know, I don't necessarily suggest just like quitting your job cold turkey, but that's that's what I needed to do. I needed to have a um a more drastic kind of a plan. Okay. Um because yeah, it like you said, it was early, urgent it was, for you. Yeah, it really was. And so a quick shout out to husbands everywhere, or to spouses, <laughs> right? To support partners, to those people who are invested in us, right? Um, because it I heard a, an inkling of your husband almost gave you permission, like we're good. Like, yeah. just do do what you got to do. Oh, yeah. And I remember that same conversation with my husband. He's like, I, I was actually, I was working full time. I had both of my kids. I was in a master's degree program. I was volunteering at my church. Like, I was doing way too much in mm-hmm. the world. And I was stressing myself out. And what was happening is I didn't have any time for him. It wasn't fair, for, wasn't fair to him. But at some point, he looked at me um, we it was the day of my daughter's fifth birthday party. She's fourteen now, but her fifth birthday party, the last guest left at seven thirty that night, mm-hmm. and I as I closed the door, I took a breath and I went upstairs because I had a five page paper that mm-hmm. I still had to do the reading for, the research for, and all of the writing for, and it was due that day, mm-hmm. and so it was like. I don't know, coming up on midnight and my husband walks in the room and he gave me a look and he said, you're done. And I said, you're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, it was almost like I needed his permission. I needed that just kind of validation, not like I'm a little child. I needed his permission like that way. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. I needed just his input. I needed somebody to tell me it's okay. It's okay to to drop something because you are not allowing any space for you to even breathe. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, and so, okay. So fast forward, all of that, you recognize you had a skill. I actually have a skill and it's marketable <laughs> and I can do some things yes. and enter 31 Marketplace. Okay. Tell us what 31 Marketplace is all about. Yeah. So 31 Marketplace is an operational consulting firm. So in a nutshell, I help business owners get ish done without <laughs> burning themselves out. I love it. So, you know, the work that we focus on is, you know, looking at their operations as a whole, okay. um, identifying where they might have gaps in current operations that they have, uh, looking at procedures that we might need to, to build out for them for things that they don't have in place, um, looking where we can automate, you know, save them some time, and then even identifying things that they need to fire themselves from. <laughs> Um, because, you know, they are the CEO of this business, they probably shouldn't be doing like everything, everything that is needed to make the business run. So helping them identify things they need to fire themselves and the resources that, you know, need to be able to do those for them. Um, and then incorporating that self-care into their system. So that's the... That sounds like a real out. difference maker, right? And yeah. so you're not just the kind of run-of-the-mill virtual assistant. I'm just going to come and help answer your emails for you, right? I'm going to actually build out some structure so that you don't have to be present at everything that your business involves. Yep. And... I'm also going to make sure that we understand how to embed self-care into daily habits and et cetera, et cetera. So that sounds fantastic. It sounds refreshing and it sounds like something that I might need to be thinking about in the very near future. (laughs) And so that is really exciting. And I'm curious, as an entrepreneur um, for 31 Marketplace, You encounter people all the time. I'll bet some of them are like me and they resist, right? (laughs) It's always just like, no, I got to, I got to get this such, I got to get this done and I got to get that done. And your to-do list is, you know, 12 things deep in not even a 24 hour day, right? In a 
12 hour work day. Yeah. Good Lord. And that's not all that uncommon, right? I would say on average, my work days are probably about 12 hours. And so in a 12 hour work day, I cannot possibly get all these things done, but yet I'm still going to try. Yep. And I'm going to beat myself up when I fail. Yep. All right. And so <laughs> what are some of the common excuses you hear for from people that don't want or don't actually practice self care, they want to, but they mm-hmm. don't. Yeah, so I I hear four um, typically um, over and over, and one is you know I I don't have time for self care, and uh, you know it's one of those things you you kind of you make time for you know what it is that you want to do, but again that that's that mindset shift that you're looking at it as like this additional thing that I need to add to my to-do list. So, right, like using you as an example, mm-hmm. I've already got a 12-hour work day. And then you're telling me that I also need to do X, Y, and Z. I need to do self-care? Yeah, for my what? self-care. It's just like, <laughs> no, I don't have time for that. Like, yes. I don't have time. I don't have time to do the stuff that, you know, I'm, I yeah. need to do to bring revenue. I don't have time to do this either. Um, so it really is, you know, shifting that mindset of, how do we incorporate it in the things that you're already doing? Things like drinking lemonade out yeah, of a out wine of glass. glass. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, another uh, excuse that I hear is, you know, I don't have the money. And it's just like, okay, you know, and I think that with that, we're looking at self-care as I've got to spend eight hours and spend like a thousand dollars at a day spa. Mm. You know, that's expensive. Yeah. But self-care doesn't have to cost you anything. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yes, nothing. You know, if, and it really kind of boils down to what are the things that make you happy? Um, and um, I, I was at a uh, a women's retreat and I was at a, a table with maybe like eight other women. And the question was asked, what do you like to do? And it was like, every woman had this deer with the headlight look like I don't know. I don't even And then, have you know, the conversations kind of started. It's like, well, I like doing this with my husband or like I do this with my kids. And it's like, but that that's not what the question was. Mm-hmm. The question was, what do you like to do? Mm-hmm. And I think that over time, we lose touch with that person. So, right, if you think about... I'm raising my <laughs> hand. I'm raising my yeah. hand. <laughs> you, you think about the person that you were maybe like in your 20s, you know, in college. Like you don't have like this serious boo thing that you're you're trying to incorporate time. And, and do these things. You don't necessarily have children. Um, you don't have like this demanding career. Like it's very much like this is I'm doing what I me. want to do. And I think that as we start to develop those significant relationships, we start getting those um, career into those careers that we're trying to build. We're building those businesses that we really you know want to to launch. We start losing pieces of ourself because we're wanting to spend time with, you know, our spouse. We're wanting to spend time with our children. And we forget those things that just we like to do that make us happy. So it's just like, okay, you know, I don't have the money to do this. Well, it's just like, well, what are some of those things that you used to do when you were 20 that cost you like nothing? Nothing. Like maybe it was walking to the park. So go walk to the park. Maybe it was sitting down and doing, you know, Sudoku for, you know, uh, like solving a couple of like those puzzles. Now, I used to play the piano. Mm -hmm. I played the piano all through probably since I was about 10 years old and all through high school, through college. As a grown up, it was just my outlet. It was my release. I felt better. Mm -hmm. And then I had kids and I'm like, Something had to give. Yeah. I didn't have time anymore. And every day it was like I longed for it, but I couldn't. It was like this unattainable thing. mirage, yeah. right? Like I see it there sitting over there in the corner, but I can't get to it because I've got a, a baby, you know, getting milk from my body. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or or I've got to give another bath mm-hmm. or I've got to change another diaper and this one is a massive diaper yeah. or I've got to actually make a meal. Um, and so it was always something that kept me from that one thing mm. that could have probably preserved more of my sanity. Self, yeah. And preserve more of you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the the other excuse is, you know, I don't even know, like, what to do for self-care. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of the, the things that I like to do with my clients is I like looking at their self-care through the lens of their love languages. Okay. And I think a lot of the times when we look at love languages, we look at it through the context of 
a relationship, usually with a significant other. And how do I speak their love language fluently so that I know how to treat them and show them love the way that they want to be shown love? Well, I think that we forget to do that for ourselves. So it's just like, okay, if I am high on words of affirmation, why can't I do a mantra for myself or write myself a love letter? So instead of waiting for somebody else to give you the thing that you crave, why not give Give it it to to yourself? So instead of waiting for your boss to tell you you're doing awesome, just look at that project. That was awesome. Yep, I did a great job on that thing. That was fantastic. Or for me, um, and if y'all are not familiar, who is it? Gary Chapman? Mm -hmm. The Five Love Languages is what we're really referring to. For me, I've actually read that book. And my love language, my dominant love language is quality time. And so um, it's, it's not even ironic anymore, now that you broke it down that way, that that's the one thing I don't give to myself Mm -hmm. because that's the one thing that I need. Yep. I'm looking for it to come from my husband. I'm looking for him to let go of the Xbox and come, you know, cuddle up with me when it's like, no, what quality time do I enjoy just alone? Just (laughs) me, not me and my kids, Mm -hmm. not me and. It's just me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Not me and my grandma, not me and my husband, not me and my mom, not me and my kids, just me. Yep. That's good. Yeah. And I don't even think about it. A lot, of, a lot of us don't. And that, that's kind of the, the foundation for building those rescue rituals into your business or into your career. So, you know, with you being quality time, you know, and part of that looks like spending time with myself, yeah. right? So maybe before you even start your day, you have a morning ritual where you get to spend time with Brenda. And however that looks, if that's with coffee in your favorite coffee mug, um, you know, sitting in your office or maybe sitting in your porch. And this is how you ritually start your day every day. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject really quickly mm-hmm. because I, I feel like I'm failing at some aspect of this, right? And I'm going really transparent just for the benefit of everybody, right? And so I do that. Mm-hmm. I wake up really early in the morning on purpose uh, because I know that that's the one time of day where it's quiet. Nobody is calling my name. Mm-hmm. My phone is not ringing, um, unless it's my sister calling me to ask me a favor. Um, but my phone is not ringing. Um, it's still, well, mostly dark outside. Um, and it just, it's quiet. Yeah. And I think that's, I crave just quiet. quiet. I like dark quiet. I just, I like it. Um, but then I feel like I'm failing because I'm like, shouldn't I be doing something? Yeah. And instead of just being still and being quiet, I'm beating myself up because I'm not praying enough. Mm-hmm. I'm beating myself up because I haven't read enough books. I, and it's like, so then I fall right back into the trap of being busy. Of being busy. Yep. And instead of just... Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, what's next? Yeah. And so I feel like I am I even fail at my little meager attempt at self-care. What what <laughs> advice would you yeah. give to somebody who is just just not doing a great job, even though they're trying? Well, you know, that, that actually is a beautiful segue into the fourth Excellent. excuse, right? So, right, we've got, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, I don't even know what to do. And then the last one is I feel selfish. Mm -hmm. doing self-care so it's just like oh like I'm sitting here and I'm enjoying like this this quality time I'm having with myself but no like this like shouldn't be like I should be yeah like I should be like listening to this podcast or I should be learning something or I should be you know responding to an email I should be doing something because clearly like just sitting here and just being like this is not the thing that I should be doing and so you know that that excuse of I don't want to be selfish you know, I, I look at it from a standpoint that your self-care, it, it is selfish. And so it's kind of like, you know, get over it. <laughs> it is selfish. It's about you. Um, you know, we we use that cliche example of, you know, if you're on an airplane and the oxygen mask comes down. Yes. 
to make sure that you put yours on yes. first so that you can attend and help other people. Well, that kind of puts your self-care in the context that you're doing that so that you can take care of other people. Where if you're on that plane and the emergency breaks out and you need to put your oxygen mask on, you need to do that simply because you need to breathe. Because <laughs> I need to survive. Period. Okay. And it's not about, you know, being able to put this oxygen mask on, you know, your spouse or your kid. It, you'd be need to be able to breathe first <laughs> to be able to do that. Period. So we, we have to let go of the guilt and the shame that we put on ourselves for using our own time and our resources and our energy to do the things that we need. So you use the word selfish, and I'm going to tell you when I saw— the title of your most recent ebook. Yeah. I like lost it because I was like, <laughs> how simplistic and perfect and beautiful and timely is the title selfish? <laughs> get selfish, get selfish. And so tell us about this book and why you decided to, to write it in the first place. Yeah. So, you know, I, I wrote it actually at a time where I was kind of starting to feel, you know, a bit of like, you know, overwhelm creeping in. It was like, I need to go away for a little bit. And so I called it, I was running away. And, uh, you know, it, I, I actually ended up just going home to Ohio where I'm from. Um, but it was just like, yeah, I'm running, I'm running away. And I'm leaving my, my husband here and my child here in the business here. And I'm just going to go home and do some things that I want to do. And so I slept and I slept in late, and I had wine, and I ate a lot of food, <laughs> <laughs> and I slept some more. And, I'm you jealous know, right now. Okay. You know, and, uh, you know, but in the midst of that, I did some writing because, like, I felt uh, creative during that time because I was giving myself the things that and I needed. And you weren't all overtired. Yes, and I wasn't, you know, dealing with, like, the demands of all this stuff. And so that's actually when I wrote Selfish because <laughs> it was one of those things, like, I had— kept having these conversations where it's like, oh, well, I don't have the time and I don't have the money and I don't want to feel selfish. And it was like, but it is selfish. It's about you and it's about what you need. And so it's a guide that really just helps um, helps the reader walk through uh, those excuses we just kind of went through, like, you know, the no time, the no money. I don't know what to do. I don't want to feel selfish, you know, and helping kind of work through that, those mindsets that we need to shift a bit. Um, when it comes to self-care, talking about how self-care really is in should be infused into the day-to-day task we do. And then I walk them through, I believe it's five practical, you know, um, r- rescue rituals that I've written out. Like, here are some examples of things that you can do that are simple Good. things. They don't cost you anything. They're not going to take a lot of time to, for you to implement. And as you practice those things, you're going to start to see a difference in just how you feel. Because kind of going back to, um, you know, you were talking about like your ritual. I, when we when we're looking at it through the lens of our our um, our love languages, there also is that concept of like the love bank, right? Especially when we're we're talking about it in the context of, you know, our partners. And so it's always like, oh, I did this. I, I spoke my spouse's love language and I, I deposited a token right, right. in their love bank, right? And so we have to, you know, do our self-care. And I think through the lens of, um, of your love languages so we can start depositing love tokens into our own bank. Because if we're doing anything like I did when I was in corporate and like I did like when I had the second route of burnout, we're running like these unsustainable paces and our love banks, like they're like beyond depleted. And so, you know, it, it takes a while, right, for you to start incorporating those rituals and actually doing things that are filling you up and charging your body for you to actually feel it because like your account is like negative. And so just like with a regular like physical bank account, like if you're a thousand dollars like in the red and it's like, okay, well, I mean, I made a dollar deposit today. Like, why don't I feel better? Uh, Well, uh, ma'am, you have like nine hundred ninety (laughs) nine more dollars to go just to break even for you to even start, you know, seeing something positive there. So you are preaching right now. (laughs) If Yubika Riddick was in the room, uh, we'd be throwing shoes at you right now. That's the (laughs) shoe-throwing ministry. And so you are so preaching to my soul right now Mm -hmm. because I believe that is exactly where I am, is just at such a significant deficit. Deficit. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like 
a day or two, it just isn't enough. Um, You have to consider longer term, just rest. Um, One of the things that I noticed that you said is kind of in the midst of your own self-care, in the midst of you being a little selfish, um, your creative your creativity started to flow. Mm-hmm. Your juices started to flow, and you produced a magnificent ebook product, right? And so, tell us really quickly where we can get it. I'm going to remind everybody at the end, but tell us right now where they can get it, just in case they want to um, go check that thing out. Tell us about the selfish where they can get that. Yeah, they can actually go directly to my website. They can go to lavistajones.com, and there's a little button there that says "Download Selfish." Excellent. Mm-hmm. And when they type in Lavista Jones, is there the um, the little accent a- over apostrophe. No. <laughs> no, no, there's okay. no accent over my A. So okay. it's just, you know, L A V I S T A J O N E S. And I love how you say um when people are confused, they they tend to say La Vista and you yes. say no, it's La Vista. Like Asta. Like Asta La, La Vista, Vista, maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so um kind of going back to this this deficit space, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think about so many people who are operating in the deficit. They're operating in the red. That's just where they live right now. They don't know better. We, we're we trying. We've taken a couple of days off. We don't know how to get out. I'm curious what's maybe one thing that you wish you had practiced more in corporate America to avoid the burnout in the first place. And so certainly the same thing that could apply to so many others who are operating in the deficit. Yeah, I would say if if I had to pick one thing, it would have been um, boundaries around my time. Because, you know, I, I started with that position when I was still in Ohio and then I transferred here to Arizona with it. And so as a result, I still had a lot of East Coast partners that I needed to work with. But now I also had West Coast partners that I needed to uh, to work with as well. And because, you know, I did have that ambition. I did have these career goals that I wanted to achieve. I was going after them, you know, really at the sake of Yeah, at myself. your own detriment. Yeah. yeah. And so... um you know, if I needed to have um, meetings at five o'clock in the morning, so be yeah, it. So be it. It doesn't matter that I have had like little to no sleep. Like I will be on that call, like bright eyed and bushy tailed, as far as you know, at right. five o'clock in the morning. And yeah, I can do a seven o'clock p.m. call for same day same I had day a five a.m. call for for my West Coast peeps. Um, no problem. It, you know, I don't. I don't need sleep. And, you know, it, it got to we the forget place. about Hawaii. Like, right. we just got all day. <laughs> right. Well, I have, so I have a funny story about Hawaii <laughs> that I think exemplifies my issue with boundaries on my time. So, it, you know, uh, Maui was just kind of like this place that we had picked to celebrate our anniversary. So we would have an annual trip there every September to celebrate um, getting married. I had such lack of boundaries with my time that one of these trips, like no joke, we took a red eye back from Maui to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So I think we got in around seven o'clock and we got home from the airport and I did a load of laundry and, you know, unpacked my suitcase, which is kind of like, which is awesome. Like in 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 itself (laughs) and did that little laundry only to repack my suitcase. My husband took me back to the airport. I had a flight around 11 o'clock that morning. I'm rolling my eyes at you. That took okay. me to Atlanta so that I could go to a meeting for my job. I'm, catch this, I'm rolling my eyes at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling my eyes at myself. <laughs> and so, so time and what comes to my mind is one of the most important words in the English language. No. Mm -hmm. Can you watch my kids? No. Can you take me to the airport? No. (laughs) Can you come to this meeting? No. Because I have already committed what is important to me on this day. And just because this new thing came up and it was important and urgent to you did not make it my emergency. Exactly. And so embracing the word no, I don't believe that's a sinister thing. I don't think it's evil at all. No. And I think we get caught up sometimes in just um, feeling like we're being rude because we had to say no. Let me tell you what's rude is if you say yes and you didn't bring your best self, (laughs) right? That's rude. And so don't be rude and just tell me no. Yep. 
Just tell me, I can't do that right now. Um, This is not going to work for my schedule right now. You don't even have to offer up an explanation. The word no, what did we say? Is a complete sentence. Yep. And so um, is that, is, are there other mechanisms that you have discovered that can help you uh, really stick to those boundaries when it comes to your time? Oh, outside of the word no. <laughs> outside of the word no. Yeah. So um, especially now as an entrepreneur, that uh, the way that I help my my boundaries is through my scheduling. Um, and so I have my schedule set up in a way that, okay, the first part of my week, this is when I meet with my clients or this is when I have sales calls. This, this is when I'm doing kind of like customer facing kind of stuff. Then around Wednesday going into, you know, the rest of the week, like that's the time that I actually need to, to work on the stuff that people are... They've paid you money for something. You've got to actually do it. So, you know, it was, you know, kind of early on recognizing, like, I can't be in calls every single day of, like, every single week, or I'm not even going to have enough time to do the thing that they paid me for. That, And I think that helped carry... That was a lesson that carried over in corporate. Like, you know, I would sometimes be double and triple booked Mm -hmm. um, on my calendar, you know, for six, eight hours in the day. But they didn't hire me to be a meeting facilitator. Mm. They hired me to do a job. And so it's like, I still had to do those that job hours sometimes after, you know, those calls were over. And so, you know, being my own boss now, it's just like, I don't want to set myself up that way to like, my calendar is so overloaded with just phone calls or, you know, it's even, I have just a segmented time for networking. And if it doesn't fit in that allotted time, I can't do it. What would you, how would you advise somebody, right? It's a little, not easier, that's the wrong word, but it's a little easier um, for an entrepreneur to kind of say, hey, I'm just not available during Mm -hmm. these times. You just can't reach me. Yeah. It's a lot more difficult for somebody who works in corporate America and your boss comes over to you and says, oh no, we got this thing in five minutes. You need to be there. How does that corporate person kind of protect those boundaries. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Uh, and, and it's challenging, right? And, and especially, I think, when you do have your your sights set on some things, mm-hmm. you know, that, that you want to accomplish because those are kind of things that are expected of you. Like, this pops up, like, I can handle it. This, yeah. you know, is, is going down, like, I can do it. But I, I think it's it's little things, right? Like, I remember from my experience, I didn't take lunches. I would be there sometimes from five o'clock in the morning to like seven, eight o'clock at night. And unless there was like a snack readily available on my desk or like my staff would like bring me Mm -hmm. something to eat, I ate nothing all day. There were times, most days actually, where it's like I didn't even take like a break to go to the bathroom. And then when I did, I was apologetic about it like the next call i'm, I'm sorry i have to familiar. go pee like yep. who apologizes what an inconvenience i have caused you <laughs> i had to go my to bladder i apologize for it <laughs> so it, it would be you know um little things like that like i can remember being very strict i guess if 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 that's the right word like with my staff you have to take a lunch you have to get away from your desk you have to go do this but i wouldn't do it like myself so mm. it's just like okay I can do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, I can put, you know, a lunch time like on my calendar so nobody else can like book a call with me during that time. And even if it's just 30 minutes where I can get up and physically get away from that desk, put something in my body and it's just like, okay, like that, that's just one of those little itty bitty things that you can do to stick to your boundaries and preserve some time for yourself. That's so good. I think about um, just yesterday, I actually came to a conclusion. Um, Again, I'm an entrepreneur. I have some liberties, a lot of liberties when it comes to, you know, my availability and that sort of thing. And so what I noticed as my daughter just started high school and my son is an old high school pro by now, he's a junior, she's a freshman. But so we're a couple of weeks into the school year and I'm noticing every day she's calling me at about 3.30. Can you come pick me up from the bus stop? 
And so, okay, I stop what I'm doing. I go get her from the bus stop. I come back. Ten minutes later, my son calls me. Okay, can you come pick me up from the bus stop? Okay, I stop what I'm doing. I go get him from the bus stop. I come back. I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. That's just all this in and out on top of just... um, in between time, I might yesterday I actually had a phone call in between picking up my daughter and picking up my son. So it's like phone call, leave out, come back, phone call, leave out. I'm out of my mind at this point, just bouncing around. And I, I came to the conclusion I need to block off this whole time. set of time, yep. right? I can't do this little bit here, a little bit there, because it's not serving my body. My body was rejecting that whole scenario yesterday. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to block off this whole block of time so that this is not even an issue. Nobody can, you know, get in my calendar and schedule time and schedule meetings and these sorts of things. And I just, I feel a sense of relief already. Yeah. Because today is the first day I get to practice my new normal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm excited. But, and so that makes me think of the word systems, right? Um, you talked about calendar. And and so the other part of 31 Marketplace is systems. Yes. And so I want to talk a little bit about how the systems get involved. What what do we need to be thinking about um, in terms of self-care and systems? Yeah, so um, I think that, you know, one of the things that I, I think that we maybe like overlook when it comes to, to self-care, especially like as an entrepreneur, is delegation. Uh-huh. Delegation is a form of self-care, right? That's such a funny right? word. And okay. so <laughs> it's one of those things that I talked about. Even. Such a foreign <laughs> word, a foreign concept. That's other people do delegation. But it shouldn't be, <laughs> but it shouldn't be. But it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, I talked about at the beginning that helping the the business owner to identify things they need to fire themselves from. You know, if you are so overwhelmed and your plate is so full, like, we really need to look at, like, what it is that you're doing and, like, ask the question, like, literally task by task, should you be doing this? Or is there somebody else that should, you know, that should be doing this and can probably do it a lot better? Is I'm, that your wife? I'm waving... <laughs> The Kleenex white flag. It's happening. Hilarious. <laughs> help. Help. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, that kind of just sparks the conversation, right? So it's just like, okay, yeah, I do need to delegate this. And it's like, all right, what kind of system, what kind of process do we need to build so that this person coming in can sit here and look at it? They have like their step-by-step instructions. And it's like, I know exactly the way that Brenda wants this to be done. I can hit the ground running as soon as I walk in the door as her employee, her VA, her whatever. Um, And then, you know, when we're then left with the things that you as a business owner does have to do, that's when, you know, looking through the lens of those love languages comes into play. How do we actually build out these systems or tweak them in a way that actually nourish you? during the day as you're doing them. So one of the examples that um, I thought of is for someone that is their dominant love language is words of affirmation. So for that person, you know, getting feedback um, from their clients, like that's going to make them feel amazing. So to purposely, like in their offboarding, have a process where we are automatically collecting testimonials that they can see you know, words that are coming in from the multitude of people that they are working with, that's going to light up, you know, their day every time one of those comes in. So it's taking some time, you know, do some um, some heavy lifting on the front end to figure out what that offboarding process looks like, putting it into practice so that as those testimonials come in, it's just like, oh, I feel great about the work that I've done. And I think that even translates into the corporate life because I can remember, you know, it's time for like your annual performance reviews. Um, And I used to do mine a little differently. Like I would make make my bosses meet with me on a monthly basis. Good. It's like I need to know how I'm doing kind of all of, I need to have like my, my, you know, thumb. on. Don't let me get six months out before you tell me I need to make a change. Let me do a little bit closer. And and words of affirmation is, you know, a, a dominant love language of mine. So it was, you know, making sure that I'm capturing on a very regular basis that you are pleased with my work. And, you know, then that just kind of, you know, helps at the end of the year. And it's like, remember all these conversations that we have had about how amazing you think I am? 
bonus time. Yeah, wink, wink. hello. Raise time. Pay me. Wink, wink. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, you know, I've I've been capturing that and I've been giving myself that feedback or requesting that feedback for myself, you know, even in my corporate life because, hey, that's something that I need. <sighs> I can't even. I, this is, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. Um, and so health, okay. So you have this, you carry on conversations of your own, and and that's something called boss talk. I do. Tell us all about boss talk. Yes. So boss talk is my new, um, my newest business baby that just turned one in July. So Yay! We congratulations. July. So we meet once a month, typically on the second Tuesday of every month, um, in downtown Mesa, Arizona. And so, uh, for about a year and a half before I launched Boss Talk, I, I co-led a more traditional networking event where you come in, you do your 30-second commercial, you do a pitch. Um, sometimes we would sit and listen to uh, a business owner do like a presentation. And it's like, great. Like, I've learned more about that product. But at the end of the day, when I go back to my office, I'm still struggling with my marketing. I'm I don't know how to implement it the way yeah, they do. Yeah, like, okay. you know, I'm overwhelmed still with the same problems that I came here with that I'm still leaving with the same stuff. But I know about, you know, this What you're doing is right? awesome. Right? Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I should go buy that. But I, that's not helping me with my business. Right. And so it was just like, I knew something was missing for me. And I was like, well, maybe it's missing for other people in the marketplace as well. So I launched uh, Boss Talk in July of 2018. And so when you come, it really is not your traditional networking event at all. Um, you you don't pitch. You don't do a 30-second commercial. You don't do any of that stuff. Really what you come in um, when you introduce yourself, you actually lead with a vulnerability. And Love you it. say, hey, I'm La Vista and I need help with my website. Like my website is a hot mess and I need somebody that can help me with this, which is not typically the way that you would present yourself in right. a normal networking event because it's normally like, hey, I'm La Vista. Everything is I'm wonderful awesome, and, and perfect. everything yes. is perfect and, and look at me this shine. Is why, yeah, this is why you should come and work with me where it's at Boss Talk. It's you don't have to present yourself in a certain way. You can come there. Oh, we can take off our masks and you. come to Boss yeah, Talk. Yeah. So it's, it's all okay. about authenticity and connection. So we lead with a vulnerability and we we share what we need in the marketplace. And the 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 focus of doing that is that somebody in that room is going to be the answer to that thing that we need or is connected with someone that is. And then as we progress, I every month I sit down with a, a woman entrepreneur and I interview her about her entrepreneurial journey. And I want to know how are you dealing with overwhelm in your business? Mm-hmm. What is a, a major failure that you've had in your business? And what was the lesson that you learned from it? You know, who do you have in your life that's holding you accountable to d- business deliverables? These kind of things. Like, how do you actually do this thing called entrepreneurship? Because maybe something that's going on in your journey resonates with mine as well. And then we open it up. I always kind of joke that Boss Talk is kind of like a podcast with a live studio audience okay. because the audience is then able to ask questions to that guest. And so it might be related to their actual um, work that they do. But most times it's about, well, how did you deal with this? Yeah. How did you deal with that? Or you It's know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the yes, raw, the yes. real. I love yes. that. That's what we say. It's the good, the bad, and the real of entrepreneurship. Good. Yes. Good. Because, yes, yeah, so many times I think people walk in with these rosy colored glasses on, right? Oh, everything is so... It's, it's our, like, Facebook highlight reel. Like, yeah. but we never show ourselves without makeup. And, right. y- yeah, let's sh- let's show the ugly side oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, yeah, like, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> this is how, I cried that day. Yeah, yeah. this is what you probably don't day. want to do. Like, learn from my experience so you don't have to hit your head against the wall. Yeah, like, yeah. nobody wants to hear about the losing your house or the, <laughs> the fact yeah. that you drive a bucket or um, anything like that. Yeah. That you ate ramen noodles yeah. every day for Or that you lost month. thousands of dollars on a deal. Or yeah. that you... Yeah, like yeah. nobody talks about those things on Instagram. I like it a lot. Yeah, but we I talk like about it, it at Boss so Talk. much. <laughs> and so there's a couple of different resources. Um, and then come to find out, you not come to find out, I knew this all along, <laughs> but the rest of you didn't. Um, La Vista is, and I are co-authors in a brand new collaborative book yes. called On Purpose. 
practical strategies to live your best life. Yes. And so we've done that under the tutelage and guidance of the fabulous Aisha Cogborn, um, who's in studio with <laughs> us right now. So we're giving her a shout. Yes. And um, and this book is available platform for purpose.com. And you can get your copy, but LaVisa, your chapter in here is all about Mm -hmm. self-care and systems and just work-related stress um, and just really how to offset and combat some of those things. And so we're really excited to share this tool with the world. Um, I'm excited about you sharing your gift, your vulnerability, right? You went through some things. I say this all the time. I go through things so that you don't have to. You've gone through some things so that so many others don't have to. And so um, I appreciate you sharing so many resources. I suspect we're going to keep the conversation going even after um, our live podcast is concluded. Um, So stay tuned on the live (laughs) because I think we'll be right back at you in a minute. But as we as we start to wrap here, I want to I want to get you because we'll do a little bit of a rescue ritual with you, and that's what we'll do as a kind of a part two. But for right now, I want to I want to conclude like I always do mm-hmm. with a little bit of a lightning round. Okay. All right, let's get it. <laughs> two reasons we cannot afford to forget self care. Go. Mm, two reasons that you cannot afford to forget self care. Um, one because your um just everything about you, like your mental, your physical, it just needs it. You know, it it craves being taken care of. Um, and so to to not do that is to do yourself, I think, a, a huge disservice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that it, it also is one of those things like leading by example, especially like those of us that are wives and mothers and, you know, sisters. People see the way that we treat ourselves and they use that as an example of like, oh, well, if she's taking the time out to do this, like then maybe I should. And, you know, I think about like my son. He sees me do things at home and then he mimics literally everything that I do. So it's those things that I'm doing to take care of myself. He sees those things. And, you know, I have a a suspicion that I'm not going to have to worry about him knowing how to take care of himself because he's seen it modeled. Good. Good. I love that. And then what's the first thing you would suggest somebody do right now? If they are in the thick of it, they are in the deficit, they are in the thick of stress, what's the first thing that you would recommend they do? The first thing, honestly, I I would find out what their love language is if they don't already know it. So going and taking um, Gary Chapman's assessment, the five love languages dot com. Find out how you are just naturally wired to receive love and then, you know, start identifying some things that will speak that love language to you like today. Excellent. Excellent. I love that. And so, and guys, right, that that love language assessment, it, it's not very long. Mm-hmm. Um, and so please don't feel like that's some big massive to do. And it's free. It's go <laughs> grab that thing. And so just do it. Even if you skip the rest of the book, just go do the assessment and get there and start to feed yourself those uh, elements of your very own love language. Thank you so much, LaVisa. I'm going to tell you, I feel like I can breathe again. My (laughs) shoulders were up here at first, and now I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is doable. I feel like this is something that I can incorporate into my life. Um, What have we got coming up, and how can people get in touch with you? Well, people can get in touch with me via my website, um, which again is lavistajones.com, L-A-V-I-S-T-A-J-O-N-E-S.com. Thank you. Um, And the next thing that we have coming up um, as a company is the next Boss Talk is in September. It's September the 10th. So that Tuesday evening at 630 in downtown Mesa, I would love to see you come out. So go to lavistajones.com and get registered to come. And thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next month. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us at the Day Before Monday podcast. We hope you have a renewed sense of confidence and strategy to create a more enjoyable career. For more about our host, Brenda Cunningham, please visit pushcareermanagement.com. And of course, follow her on Facebook and LinkedIn. See you next month with a new installment of The Day Before Monday, every fourth Friday at 1 p.m. right here live on phoenixbusinessradiox.com. Until next time, keep pushing. Keep pushing.